Hi, guys. Um, if the government's proposed stage two tax cuts are passed in full, someone on $200,000 a year would get a 4.5% tax cut, but people on $45,000 a year will receive a cut of just half a percent. It's estimated that these cuts will cost upwards of $20 billion in the first two years. Does the panel think that tax cuts for the rich is really the best way of stimulating the economy at a time when one in 10 people are out of work and job seeker is being cut. Naomi Simpson, tax cuts. Yeah, uh, the, the thing that I see is that what business needs now is customers. How are we going to get customers so that they can spend? And it's actually very cyclical. So we hear we need jobs. So first of all, we do need to create jobs. The only way to create jobs is to have confidence in the economy. And the thing is that when we think about tax cuts, we have to give businesses confidence that they can invest in the future. And then it becomes cyclical. So one tax element like that in isola isolation without looking at all of the tax structures. So I think about payroll tax. So at a certain point in a small business life, it's a disincentive to grow. All of a sudden you get so big, like I'm not talking that big, but the governance and the requirements, and you can, is, is quite material. So payroll tax was invented in 1941 for child endowment to support people who needed, you know, their husbands had gone off, off, off to war and they needed to raise their children in 19... Uh, it, and then it was nationalised and sent to the feds and sent back to the states in 1971. And I think if we want to stimulate the economy, we've really got to look at how we have an overall tax restructure. Do you, do you think it's easy to justify that, though, when you are cutting things out, when you're reducing JobKeeper, reducing JobSeeker, there is the insecurity that we heard about then. Is it still so, justifiable to say to someone on hundred or $150,000 or $200,000 a year that you're going to get a, a tax break? Well, for a start, we do know that there is job growth in certain areas and there is massive job losses in other areas. So there are... And we need to reskill our people. So what I would like to see is that we're investing in an apprenticeship program that is beyond what they called for yesterday, which is about 100,000 apprenticeships. I would like to see that, we, that they move it beyond the trades and into technical skills. So, so Nikki Hartley, do, do the tax cuts make sense? Um, look, I, I personally... I'm not in favour of them and, and for the reasons that you've outlined. I mean, you know, the old saying, lies, damn lies and statistics. Uh, you, can, you can manipulate the way you present these tax cuts uh, to say that they're fair and that even under, under stage three that the top 10% will still be paying a certain percentage of, of, of the tax base, but they're actually earning more. Of, of So it's, it's how much you're paying proportionate to how much you're earning that I want to look at. Stage two, look, I wouldn't die in a ditch over it, but it wouldn't be my first thing and, and I certainly wouldn't have it at the expense of everything else. Stage three, you know, if you flatten the tax rate, by definition, it is less fair, it's less progressive. So, but this you know, is, is that who we this... want to be? And particularly in a time when yeah. we're worried about revenue, we're getting raising debt, we've heard we've got massive debt. But this debt. isn't about stage three, let's be clear, and there's a whole lot of a conversation we could have about stage three. Well, there's which some reports tonight saying that stage three won't be included. Yeah, in yeah. So, so, and for those who weren't across what stage three was, it takes out a whole uh, layer. Mm. But to your question, um, we know people on lower incomes, if you put money in their pocket, they'll spend it. We know that if you put money in the pocket of people on higher incomes, they're more inclined to save it. So if we're on about stimulating the economy, you target people on lower incomes. That's just the facts of the matter. There is, however, a problem we have in Australia, which is this issue of bracket creep. And so what those tax cuts are trying to do, I think, is balance those two things. The question is, where are your priorities? And it goes to Nikki's point. If your priority is about spending, you target on lower income people, uh, and not necessarily on higher incomes. Yeah, we know that people will save. We know that the, the savings rate went up to 20% in the June quarter. It's it's not what you... If you're simulating the economy, and I guess that's the point, is what's your objective what's in all of objective? this? What's your objective? Is it something you should be bringing forward if you're worried about stimulating the economy? No, give it to people who spend it. And we have yeah. absolutely seen that in spades. We've had the data broken down for us that shows that it's, the, it's all the supplements that the government has provided. That's what's got spent in the economy and kept us, you know, from being in, in even more dire state than we are. And it's so, $12 billion. Let's mm. be clear, though, what the tax cut... I understand mm. the numbers are about $12 billion. So whilst you're bringing down JobKeeper and JobSeeker, $12 billion will come back through tax cuts. The question is how much of it will be saved and how much of it will be spent.
So Tanya, just, I think just it's on really that point, Jane. to come in here, yeah, if you don't mind, if I can come in here, because let's face it, these tax cuts are in fact already legislated and the government makes no apologies for ever, will make any more, more apologies for uh, for wanting to allow people to keep more of the money that they earn. Sure, we but took that legislation, legislation to the last timing. election. This is we about took the, it to the last election. whether you should bring it forward. So can you explain why now, why you're deciding to bring this forward? Well, I'm not going to speculate about what might be in the budget tomorrow night, but what I will tell you is that those tax cuts have already been legislated. Labor supported those tax cuts and supported the legislation. And uh, and, and and what we know is that the progressivity, uh, you know, the, the progressiveness of the tax system remains. We'll still find that the top 5% of taxpayers pay, uh, you know, the, by, the, by far the most amount of because tax. Because they the earn the most. Tax. <laughs> yeah. But that's exactly right. And simplifying the tax system by by removing that 37 cents in the dollar bracket will in fact benefit 94% of Australians will pay no more than 30% top marginal tax rate. That's got to be a good thing. Do we'll never apologise for allowing more Australians to keep more money in their pockets. It actually brings about uh, financial resilience and confidence in the economy. Uh, Jim Chalmers, uh, a lot of Australians have had a pretty tough year. Is Labor going to stand in the way of some tax cuts potentially by Christmas according to some reports tonight? Well, we support the first two stages of the tax cuts and we support uh, stage two being brought forward so long as there's additional tax relief uh, for low-income earners as well for all the reasons the other panellists have talked about. Uh, if there are going to be tax cuts, if they're directed at people uh, on low and middle incomes, they're more likely to be spent in the economy and people uh, are more likely to need that uh, additional uh, help. Uh, so, yes, we support the first two stages. We haven't been supportive of the third stage because that third stage is the least responsible, uh, least affordable, least fair and least likely to be effective in the economy. We've made those views clear for some time now. Uh, Jane Holton talked about the withdrawal of JobKeeper and, and, and being replaced in some part by these tax cuts. It's really important to remember uh, that for a worker who might be getting $50 a fortnight out of this, uh, these tax cuts, if we're predicting what might happen tomorrow night, uh, many of them, millions of them, have actually just lost $300 a fortnight in JobKeeper, so they're $250 in the hole. We need to remember that. Mm. Naomi Job talked keeper, about... Hang, hang just on, let me make Jim, my final point job, there. Hang on, JobKeeper has my not final been, point is, been extended, and you know that. It's, it's just been tapering by $300 down. And a you fortnight, agreed yeah. with the tapering down of JobKeeper six months ago. No, we said it had to be tailored to the conditions in the economy, and the economy is still weak. It's and being it's been cut. extended as it's well being as cut. tapered. Jane, it's, it's been, been cut from $1,500 to $1,200 well. a fortnight. It's been extended for Jane, more than six and, months. Jane Jim. and Jim, I don't, I don't think we need a repeat of the Trump-Biden debate. So no, but I need to make my final <laughs> point, just... Hamish, that Jane interrupted. It's gone from $1,500 to $1,200 a fortnight. But my final point is this, and Let's it's to agree question. with Naomi. It's to agree with Naomi. Uh, tax cuts on their own aren't a substitute for a more comprehensive plan uh, for the economy. We can't have the budget tomorrow night to just be another grab bag of headlines. It needs to be a comprehensive plan and tax cuts on their own are not enough.